Billy, Jade, welcome home. I'd like to build the world. Ah, oh, sh. Here we go again. Another day, another woke disaster for Netflix, as for whatever reason, I, I don't know, I'm just asking the question, but is it that hard to make a good Resident Evil movie? Look, I don't think that the Mila Jovich or Jovich videos were particularly, movies were particularly good. I think the first one or two, they're fine. They're like literal popcorn flicks. Um, I wouldn't say they're objectively bad maybe some of them are i don't think i've even seen all of them but like i saw the first few in the theaters and i had a blast watching but that was in the zomba palooza like 10 15 years ago when like walking dead was awesome and when resident evil was making big money at the box office generic zombie movie 74379 er now nobody really cares about it's like they they just keep pumping out this garbage thinking that I, I'm done. Like if there's a, gr by the way, in my opinion, one of the best zombie movies ever made is 28 days later. But anyway, um, you know, that kind of zombie movie I'd get down with, but this whole like th throngs of, it's just, Oh, I'm just over it. And, and when Netflix announced, by the way, that they were redoing resident evil, you just knew it was going to be the most Netflix adaptation of Netflix adaptations in history, including uh, with the president, uh, Netflix Resident Evil showrunner, uh, defends uh, all the race swapping, saying that live action adaptations are, quote, limiting themselves by casting based on character accuracy. I mean, yeah, who cares about character accuracy except for all of the fans that you're hoping to court over their existing like fandom of that franchise and characters. Look, I don't think that race swapping ruined uh, Commissioner Gordon in the Batman. I don't think that like he was a particularly interesting character in that movie. I think they could have done more. I think they could have done more with Albert. I think the movie was way too long. There were a lot of problems with the Batman, not that least of which was race swapping. But when you have beloved characters and you do that, just don't like, like whiz on our legs and tell us it's raining. We know why you're doing it. Um, and, and it's been a complete disaster. The Resident Evil official trailer on Netflix right now is currently sitting at 147,000 dislikes. 147,000 dislikes. Number one trending on YouTube. You see this. Based on Capcom's horror video game series of the same name and unrelated, and unrelated, of course, to either the previous Paul S. When, uh, Paul w. S. Anderson film series or the 2021's Welcome to Raccoon, Netflix's upcoming Resident Evil will feature a new and original storyline in two timelines. The first timeline begins when 14-year-old sisters Jade Wesker and Billy Wesker move to New Raccoon City, explains Capcom. The Wesker sisters enjoy their youth and wonderful man-made corporate city of New Raccoon City, but they gradually begin to realize that uh, the reality of the city and suspect of their father is hiding something. Of course, uh, you have, I don't know, these are sisters, so when I first saw the trailer, I didn't know they were sisters, so I was like, oh, they're probably dating, but uh, I don't know if they're, I mean, I don't know if they are sisters, one of them, one of them is, is clearly black and the other one's clearly not black. So I don't, I mean, obviously that's entirely possible. Um, but, uh, you have the second timeline is a future world more than 10 years later. The company continues. The number of human beings on earth are now less than 15 million. And the T virus has turned, turned the earth into a monster of more than 6 billion people and animals in this new world. Jade now 30 years old featuring the haircut, I believe fights for survival 
but is also tormented by the secrets of her past surrounding her sister, father, and herself. Wow. Just sounds so much like Resident Evil, doesn't it? It sounds exactly like a Resident Evil film. In, like, in every way. I mean, right? Spooky house. The, 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 the cop shows up. and the, Oh, no, it's nothing like Resident Evil, but it's named Resident Evil. Oh, okay. So you just want me to watch it because you called it Netflix. The same day, Entertainment Weekly published an interview with Dab, the recounting the earlier conversation they had with the showrunner during the earlier Resident Evil media press event in April, asked by a journalist at the event for insight on his decision to race swap Wesker with Reddick's casting. Dab replied, if you know the games, Wesker is dead. He got blown up by a rocket launcher in a volcano at the end of Resident Evil 5. True. As for the specific choice to cast Reddick, Dab posted to the crowd, posted to the crowd, I think when you are casting in the modern day and age, if you're limiting yourself based on, well, this character is blonde, so we got to look at blonde actors, you got to find yourself in a bad position. That's a that's a dumb position to have in the first place because anybody can just dye their hair blonde. Um, what, what we're talking about here is skin color. Now, I don't in particular, my position with Resident Evil is I've always had a lot of respect for the franchise, um, but it's not like a sacred cow to me. I know a lot of people, for a lot of people, it is. Those are the people that Netflix is counting on to watch this show. It's just like with The Last of Us and The Witcher TV series, right? Like the Witcher, t Witcher TV series is nothing like what I wanted. It it's like, okay. But and if it wasn't Henry Cavill, I would, I would have zero interest in it because like, there's just no point. But th they, they take these franchises, these beloved franchises, and then some 23-year-old, uh, you know, brightly colored haired individual with 14 pronouns says, actually, I know better than the fandom. I know better than the fandom that we're hoping to court. And, and, and what you get is this abomination. I mean, if we, let's just take a look. Again, 31,000 upvotes. Not too shabby. Hey, my videos don't get 31,000 upvotes. By the way, leave a like on this video. If you haven't yet, also please subscribe to the channel. But it has, again, you, YouTube hides it, but 147,000 dislikes. That's 147,000 people that noped out because of the trailer. This, when Netflix is hemorrhaging paying subscribers. I mean, look what they did to the Halo TV series. How, how simple could you have made it? Nope. We know better. And we're going to spend $10 million an episode uh, to prove that we know better. Is anybody talking about the Halo TV series other than Angry Joe? Does anybody care about it? Some of the top comments. This has big, we bought a script and slapped Resident Evil vibes, uh, uh, Resident Evil on it vibes. It should just be a standalone series. It's genuinely impressive how Resident Evil movies keep fumbling such great source material. There's uh, Tiana. It can't possibly be this hard to make a faithful, well done Resident Evil adaptation. My goodness. Netflix. These are just the top comments. Right? These are just the top comments, right? Netflix. This series has a strong female character. Fan. I agree. There are strong female characters that everyone loves. Her name is Jill Valentine. Netflix. Okay. But there has to be inclusion and representation. Fan. I agree. There are two beloved characters with those features, Ada Wong and Shiva Alomar. Their backstories could be great to adapt. Netflix, you know what? I'm just going to ignore everything and see how it goes. The Scoundrels Cantina. I have a feeling more and more people are going to love, be loving the Mila Jovic, Jovic Resident Evil films as Hollywood butchers all the new stuff they, they dump out regarding Resident Evil. Here we go again. Give them the Rings of Power treatment meaning massive dislikes, 7,000 likes. This couldn't look less like Resident Evil. I don't get it. Like, I don't even understand. Hey, Camelot, this is the most Netflix adaptation meme brought to life that I've ever seen, 5,000 likes. It's times like these when I wish my favorite franchises never got popular, 4,000 likes. Congrats, Netflix. You really are the MVP of fumbling the ball literally every single time. I mean, the source material for Resident Evil is so deep and well-known and beloved. Why is it so hard? 
2000 likes. Something I feel like a lot of Resident Evil adaptations seem not to realize is that Resident Evil is never a post-apocalyptic situation. The zombies literally never take over. Like at the most, they infest a small town, but they are quickly taken care of. I mean, how do you even do this? Why does Resident Evil keep getting the sci-fi treatment? I mean, just look at... I mean, I mean... <laughs> I don't even have to, you know, just look at it and you just know. Somebody's like, we got to have, um, you know, we got to have these two women holding hands, although I think they might be sisters. Here's the, the haircut, uh, a strong independent whammon of color to take over the world, take on everything. Yes, of course, what is going on with this woman's face? Why is it filmed like this? It looks really bizarre. Um, it's just... None of this looks like Resident Evil. Who is this for? And Capcom, you know what? Also, shame on you. Shame on you, Capcom. Like, stop giving the rights to these people. I know they probably paid you a bag, but this is embarrassing. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.